All right, let's take a look at the rest of the sword here. And start to add in some more edge loops to kind of uh, make sure that we're maintaining some of the harder edges on this model. So I'm going to press 1. I'm going to go to Edit Mesh and then Insert Edge Loop Tool. And I'm going to add an edge loop going right on the edge of the guard here on both sides. And then well, obviously, we'll need some edge loops. Oh, we can't add it there. So we have to add it up here. Kind of just going around the edges here. And one up here. We'll need some edge loops down here. Oh, okay, once again, I can't do that. So add it in here. And then as far as these uh, edge loops here, because I can't add an edge loop up here because of what we did with the with this spiral coming down. So what I can do, though, is I can double click on this edge and lift it up a little bit and then go back to my uh, insert edge loop tool and add another edge loop kind of right in the middle in between the other two. So we'll hit R and just scale that in a tiny bit. Do the same thing up here at the top. There's nothing, I can't add any more edge loops on this side, but what I can do is double click on this and just push this down a little bit and then insert an edge loop right here and we'll kind of scale that one in a little bit scale this in a little bit too so we can kind of go to object mode here hit three on the keyboard and see how that pans out so we're maintaining the ring here and the ring down here and this edge got quite a bit harder on the side of the guard here so we want to do the same thing on the blade right here. So I'll select this, go back to uh, our one or our uh, non-smoothing mode here. Let's go to edge and double click and go around here. And that's not going to give us everything. So I tell you what, let's go to edit mesh, insert edge loop tool. We'll insert an edge loop, we'll insert two edge loops. And then we'll select this edge loop down here on the bottom. Oops, undo that. Hit Q, double click here. That doesn't select everything, but I can hold down Shift, double click on this side, and I can single click these edges. And now we have an entire loop going around the base of the sword here. I'll press R for my scale tool, and I'll just scale out a little bit on Z, and then a little bit on X. And then I'll take this edge loop, we'll move it down a little bit, and then take this edge loop and move this one down a little. So now when I go to object mode and I hit 3 to smooth this out, you can see the transition from the blade to the guard is a lot better now. All right. So I'll select the uh, model here, hit 1, and let's add in, go to Edit Mesh, Insert Edge Loop Tool, add in an edge loop here and here on either side, and one really close to the, the handle here on either side. An edge loop down, oops, let's see, we want an edge loop right here and one here. And let's see. Let's see how that looks. So I'll hit Q, right click and hold, go to object mode, select the object, press 3 for my smoothing preview. That pretty much gives us. That looks quite a bit better. 
Um, I'm going to select this and hit 1, and let's see, I think we can add edge loops. This may or may not work. Let's just see what it looks like. Mm, I think that looks better. Yeah. Okay. All right, so the last thing I want to see is can I add edge loops uh, here to kind of add more detail or definition between the top part of the blade and the and the and the blade's edge. So let me go to insert edge loop tool and I'll insert an edge right here and then one right here and let's see what that looks like yeah that gives us a little bit more definition on that section there okay All right, so the last thing we need to do is we need to add a few more edge loops going up the blade here. So what I'm going to do is go to my front panel, and I'm going to go to Edit Mesh, and then I'll go to Insert Edge Loop Tool. And right now I'm going to turn off my smoothing. So I'm going to press 1 on the keyboard, and I'm going to add in two loops in this section here, two edge loops here. And then I'll do three here. And the reason that I'm adding these extra edge loops is that when we subdivide in Mudbox, we want to have the subdivisions, the little square polygons that start that show up. We want those um, to be squares. Right now, if we were to subdivide this, because we have these long rectangular polygons here, it's going to subdivide, and those going to they're going to stay as rectangles. We want to get them to be a little bit more like squares so that when we use our stencils the stencils are actually going to work well okay so now I've subdivided this I'm going to hit Q right click go to object mode go back over here to my perspective panel and what I'm going to do now is just select the object I'll turn off my reference so I'll click on the V right here on the front ref layer and now I'm going to scale this sword up. I want to scale it up so that it's the right size when we import it into Mudbox. So I'm going to click on scale X, Y, and Z, and I'm going to type in 60. And then I'll hit A on the keyboard here. You see, here's our new sword. It's, it's gigantic. So I've we got my pivot point down here in the bottom of the grid here. I'm going to go to Modify, Center Pivot. I'll bring the sword down a little bit. And then the next thing I need to do is I need to freeze the transformations on this. So I'm going to go to Modify and then Freeze Transformations. This is absolutely critical to do this before you send your file to Mudbox. If you don't do this, you're going to have all kinds of problems with your mesh, especially when you're smoothing out or you're, when you do any kind of sculpting and then you switch to the smooth mode. It just won't work. So make sure that you freeze your transformations. So that's all set over here. I can see everything's set to zero for translate and rotate, and then everything's set to one for all the scale channels. All right. So now I'm going to go to File, Save Scene As, and I'm going to save this as Iron Sword Export. Okay. I'll hit Save. And then I'll go to File, and then I'm going to go over to Send to Mudbox, and I'll go to Send as a New Scene. All right, so it's giving me uh, an error message, Problems Detected in Imported Mesh. So that's okay. I'm going to hit Keep This Mesh. So here's our sword right here. I'm going to go to Material Presets, and I'm going to add on this um, lighter, or I guess just this different hue here. I want the kind of default mud box uh, texture so it's a little bit easier to see the sword here. And the next thing I want to do is I want to make sure that I set my UVs up. So right now if I go to my UV view you can see the UVs are 
all over the place. Um, different sizes, they're stacked on top of each other. We need to straighten that all out. So I'm going to go to UVs and Maps and then go to Create UVs. And here I'm going to go to Replace Existing UVs. And I'll keep this at a value of 1. Okay, now we have our UVs laid out and you can see they're not overlapping anymore. I'll go back to my 3D view now and basically now we're pretty much ready to start sculpting. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and save this file. So I'm going to go to File and then Save Scene and it's the default is going to be Ironsword Export.fbx and we're just going to call this Ironsword Mudbox and then I'll hit Save and then it's going to ask me do I want to change to the .mud format and I'll hit yes, I'm going to hit use.mud and now we have our file and it's all saved and we're ready for the sculpting process and I'm going to start that in the next video.